Hello everyone, welcome to part 5 of Dragon Ball Xenoverse. In the last episode, we helped Goku defeat Frieza, fix the timeline, and introduce Goku as an iconic Super Saiyan in the saga. We also took a glimpse at a mysterious character who was chuckling at the end of the Frieza saga. Apparently, that character must be responsible for these shenanigans in the Dragon Ball Z timeline. You know, the enemies getting all stronger and stuff. I know who he is, but I'm not going to spoil it just yet. Anywho, let's continue the story of Cyan in the Android Saga. Just warning you right now, the difficulty will increase slightly the further we reach down the timeline to the movie sagas. Just so you know. Trunks' very existence is in jeopardy as Toa tries to remove all traces of him from history. You, on the other hand, head to the timeline where Goku and his friends are already dead and 17 and 18 have brought chaos and mass destruction to the world. And now we bring you breaking news on the android threat. Bridgetown, just south of West City, is at this time under attack. This scene right here kind of bothers me a bit. It's not the scenery, it's the one on the far the left of the screen. This game has a model of Cell's original form, but this form isn't implemented as a playable character. It's kind of a missed opportunity when a game added this version of Cell as an NPC. But no, I digress. I can see why it happened. Remember the game Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3? That game has a huge roster of DVZ characters. Most of them are different versions of movesets of the same characters, such as Goku, Gohan, etc. etc. Having different versions of the same character would overflow the character roster. But Xenoverse 1 has a decent roster that emphasizes the ones that are more recognizable in the DVZ timeline. I remember the movie villains such as Android 13, Dr. Relo, and Garlic Jr., but they're not really that important. Likewise, there's no point of adding them in the roster if no one's going to use them. I have some thoughts about the roster in the Dragon Ball Xenoverse, but I'll tell you about that later. Right now, let's continue with this mission with these so-called androids. Unfreeze! Trunks, your existence is in jeopardy now. The future is just about to change. What do you mean? Probably the workings of those two. Wait, they want to change history? Erase me completely? Supreme Kai of Time, what should I do? Calm down. It's dangerous for you to act now because your existence is ephemeral. However, we don't have much time left. Could you stop those two? Mm. Guys? Okay, this mission can be a little bit difficult if you're not careful. This is the first escort mission in Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Unlike the ones in the parallel quest, which I'll explain about them later. You cannot allow yourself or Trunks to die in this mission. If either one of you is dead, then you will fail. Immediately. The androids will most likely target anyone that's in their close range, and they can be a bit annoying to defeat. 
When you fight Android 17, he'll unleash a force field to knock you away whenever you keep pummeling him with your combo attacks. He'll also unleash a small amount of shockwaves just to stun you. Speaking of shockwaves, both Android 17 and 18 have an ultimate attack where they unleash a larger shockwave called the Super Electric Strike, where the range of the attack covers most of the horizontal space. When they're about to activate it, you need to hover vertically and escape their attack range as fast as possible. If not, then that ultimate attack will hit you like a freaking truck. You'll take a truckload of damage and the entire situation will get really ugly. I'm not kidding. What's worse is that Trunks flies in within the enemy's range and sometimes takes damage on purpose, thus ruining your chances of completing this mission. Two ultimate shockwaves will kill Trunks directly, so you have to be careful. By the way, you can use your health items, but healing Trunks in this mission is null and void, so you aren't able to heal Trunks after he's been taken damage. Yeah, I know it's stupid, but this isn't the only escort mission that I have to deal with. When you fight Android 18, she's not really much of a threat. She'll just knock you away by spinning around shooting key blasts at random places. That's actually her evasive skill, by the way. Her super attacks aren't heavy when it comes to dealing damage, so you'll have no problem fighting her. Don't fall for 18 sassy attacks, and don't forget that when you're attacking 18, Android 17 will sometimes fly in and interrupt your combos, and vice versa. Make sure you upgrade your custom character before entering this mission. If not, well, I don't know what to tell you. History should have been returned to normal, but back at Toki Toki City, Trunks was still about to vanish. It was only a matter of time before he was completely gone. Just then, a mysterious man appears to tell you that a distortion in history had occurred in another place, and sends you to sell. You know, Toa, it would have been more accurate if you hold up two fingers instead of one. That's kind of a misconception, don't you guys think? My body. Wait. Well, you weren't able to. Look at it. It's turning transparent. History hasn't been corrected. <laughs> Look, I've gotten a rise out of you. But there's nothing you can do on it's too late now. Resistance is futile. Damn it! What else could have been changed? At this rate... You seem to be troubled. Don't make that face. Would you like to go to the chain? I'll take you there. Here, take my hand. <laughs> you have no time. You have no choice. Good. Good. Tell the Supreme Kai of time that I'll see her soon.
This level in this saga is stupid. I'm not talking about fighting perfect possessed Cell right in front of us. I'm talking about the ranking system in this level. Yes, each level has a ranking system depending on your performance in a match, such as B rank, A rank, S rank, and a new rank exclusive to the Xenoverse series, and by far the highest rank, the Z rank. This level is very harsh and it's clearly impossible to get a Z rank here. Why? Because you have to fight Cell with super armor from the start. Some of your attacks won't flinch him so you have to break the super armor just to combo him. Otherwise he'll just interrupt you with a few of his attacks thus knocking you away. Yeah I tried so hard just to get a Z rank here but the highest rank I've gotten was a B. And I played this like multiple times. Still didn't work. Even if I spam ultimate moves with full health or I KO Cell in less than 2 minutes, it still won't give me a high rank. Well, it's not me. I'm just fighting Cell just fine. And I don't really focus on getting Z ranks on every level. But you know what? Forget it. It could be the level itself where it stabs you in the back thinking that you're forced to get a D rank or a C rank or something because you earned the high ranks from the pre previous levels. If you earn a Z rank in this level, that's fine, but if you think that this is the one of those stupid hard levels in Dragon Ball Xenoverse, this is definitely not one of them. Like I said, when we reach to the parallel quests, I'll explain why players were complaining about them being stupid hard to begin with. And it's not the AI. Oh no, it's much worse than that. Just wait and see. It's all finally over. Everyone. I have to thank you, too. But first, I need to know something. You've helped me a lot throughout this entire thing. I have to know, who are you? So I'll know... someday? That's not cryptic. <laughs>
This is the story of Trunks in another timeline. After returning from planet Namek, Goku died from heart disease. Androids 17 and 18 appeared thereafter and causes mass chaos and destruction. The last of the warriors, Gohan, died trying to protect Trunks. Trunks used the time machine built by Bulma to return to the past. Though training in the battle with Cell, he obtained greater power than before. Trunks returned to his own era and defeats 17, 18, and Cell before he achieves perfect form. And so, peace returned. And that concludes part 5 of Dragon Ball Xenoverse. So, in the next episode, now we enter the Cell Saga. You see what I did there? I'm doing the chronological order, just like in the anime. You'll recognize why this one is also one of the most popular sagas in Dragon Ball Z. I would say it's perfect. You know what I mean? Okay, never mind. I just like saying that for a reason. One more thing. I'm pretty sure some players play Dragon Ball Xenoverse casually, so don't worry about the ranking system that much. The only thing that matters is that you have fun playing this game. That's it. Alright then, I'll see you guys later.